Welcome back to another episode of Canadian Ketchup. I'm Javon Shepard, and this week we got three new faces for you. No Draymond Green tonight as we talked about Whittington. That's two right there. Welcome to the league. First up, we got Lindell Wigginton, North Preston's finest, finally getting his his flowers. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks converted his his contract to a two way. He was having a really good season in in the G League, seventeen and five, and he's a dynamic combo guard that can really get downhill, can score all three levels of the court, and a and a big time player. So I'm excited for him. Trent Jr. Oh! Crawls up to the top floor and lays it down. Next up, we got Chris Boucher, and anybody that's been following the Raptors knows how well he's been playing. He's been one of the bright spots, especially coming off of the bench, really being an energy giver to this team, and, and that's what he can do, right? He got off to a slow start this year, but now he's playing to his strengths, you know, at being agile, being athletic, being quicker than other bigs, uh, and versatile, right? Playing some four, playing some five, and guarding essentially two through five. So I think he's, he's been a big help. Um, just great to see him settle down through the season and really contribute and help this team. Four on two, middleman is Melton. Park the trailer all the way, lay it up and in. Lay it up and in, and a foul. Last up, we got Brandon Clark. You know, really special. He's played well for the Memphis Grizzlies in the last stretch here, but he has this unique ability. He's athletic, but when he gets it in the short roll, he has this ability uh, to float the basketball. And that's touch, that skill. And you often don't find that with bigs at the NBA level. Now we got my guy, Blake Murphy, going to break down these three guys for us. Blake, tell me what you know about Lindell. Yeah, he's a he's a fun G League success story. You know, this is uh, his third go round in the G League, finally getting a chance at the NBA level. Uh, the fourth guy among your CEBL crew to get the call up this year. So we've only seen him in one game with the Bucks so far. He had two points and a steal in a quick little window. But they've committed to him with not one of those hardship 10 days, but with a full two-way contract. So what I'm looking for from Lindell, if he gets an opportunity, is basically just continue what he's done in the G League. He's averaging 17 points and five assists so far this year. And he does that on pretty good efficiency while carrying a pretty high load for the herd and then his previous G League teams as well. So uh, you know what Lindell could do very well, Javon, for, from the CBL and from his well, time coming you. up. Really excited to see if he could carry that over to a small minute bench roll for the Bucks down the stretch. And obviously, I know you've been tuned into the Raptors. I've been following you. So uh, Chris Boucher, right? Like He's been playing well. Chris Boucher started the season a, a little shaky, I think. You know, he had some trouble finding out, hey, what's my role on this team? What's my identity? Am I a center? Am I a power forward? Well, what we've seen since December 5th, and that's a stretch of 21 games, Boucher's averaging almost 13 points, eight rebounds, over a block per game, and he's done that with 61% true shooting. So Boucher hasn't become the knockdown three-point shooter that I think some people thought he might be able to become, but he's hit 34% of his threes since that date. He's 11 of 22 from the corners on the season, so you don't have a six foot nine center slash power forward in the corners too often, but he can hit him when he's there. And then most important to me, I think, is that he's been the one consistent factor in Raptors bench units that have struggled a little bit. He's got the best net rating on the team of anyone who comes off the bench primarily. And over this stretch that I'm talking about since December 5th, uh, the Raptors have outscored opponents by 4.2 points per 100 possessions when Boucher's on the floor. Probably most encouraging for Boucher's long-term outlook is that he's played over 400 minutes this year alongside either Kem Birch or Precious Achua. So this experiment of sliding Boucher eventually from the center position to the power four position seems to be working out pretty well for him. See, and this is why I like chopping it up with you, man. You break down all the numbers for me. I wasn't the best at math, but you simplify it. And uh, then we got, and I, I almost want to call him like the forgotten one, because um, he's not often talked about, right? And, and Brandon Clark having a really good season here on this last stretch uh, with Memphis. He's the perfect Grizzly in that sense where, you know, I'm not sure if you if you ask the casual fan if they realize that the Grizzlies are 32 and 17, 11 game win streak. And Clark was a huge part of that. So he's averaged just shy of 20 minutes on the season. He's been remarkably efficient inside the arc. He's basically ditched the three point shot, but he's shooting 65% 
overall. So you look at what's this guy doing? Well, first of all, he leads all forwards in points per shot attempt, even without the three ball. He leads all forwards in block percentage. He leads all forwards in offensive rebounding. There's a lot of stuff that he's doing that, hey, yeah, he doesn't get a lot of touches. So maybe the points per game don't jump out to you. He's averaging 10. Um, maybe that doesn't jump out to you, but he does so many of the secondary things well, and he plays his role so efficiently. Brendan Clark's probably not going to get a lot of time in that small ball five that he might eventually play for Canada. Um, he's only got about 89, 90 minutes this year as the center, but he's played a ton alongside Jaron Jackson Jr. And the Grizzlies have destroyed teams plus 16 net rating when those two share the court. So I think this is just a continuation of Clark um, knowing what his role is and excelling within it and accepting, hey, you know, I'm not going to be the 20 point per game guy, but I'm going to be the best possible tag team partner for Jaron Jackson Jr. My guy, Blake, appreciate you stopping by with us. See, I do the eye test. I, I, I get by on the eye test, but I like I like chopping it up with you deep, take a deep dive into the numbers. So it's great. Thanks for having me on, Javon. That's it for another episode of Canadian Catch Up. I want to send a special thank you to my brother, my friend, Blake Murphy. Took us to school today, crunched some numbers on these guys. And that's it until next time. See you then.